Good evening. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Clavier House, purveyor of the finest pianos for both sale. Yeah, I know. It's not, uh, it ain't on, James. Well, you guys can hear me. Yeah? There we go. Um, welcome to Clavier House, purveyor of the finest pianos for both sale and restoration. This is a very special concert for a number of reasons. First of all, the pianist is awesome, Sharon Chang. <laughs> Second of all, we are honored by two composers, one of whom is with us, sitting in the back somewhere, that's Louis Pelosi. And the other, who is with us only in memory, but was a wonderful pianist and composer, and that's Stanley Babin. More about Stanley Babin, uh, we'll talk about him a little bit during the break. His cousin, we'll talk about him, and I'll say a few words beforehand. But for now, we're going to be, begin with the three fugal meditations, I think they're called. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Thanks, Lou. Uh, fugal metamorphosis one and three of Louis Pelosi, and then uh, Beethoven's Piano Sonata number 28 in A Major, Opus 101, and I will announce after the break the rest of the program. Sharon Chang.
So what we would like to discuss a little bit during the break is about Stanley Babin, born in 1932, died in 2010, composer and pianist and brilliant scholar of actually uh, many things Jewish, including uh, the book of Job, from which the meditations on Job that we'll be hearing um, after Lee and I both speak uh, is one of his finest solo piano works. Stanley um, was somebody I came to know late in his life. I met him in 2007 when we did a lot of recordings together. And it was quite a marvelous experience getting to know this man. I only wish it had happened 20 years earlier, but it didn't. And uh, getting to know him, he had a great sense of humor, and we would talk a lot about piano and composers and things like that. And when he was sick, I would go visit him uh, at his place and hopefully cheer him up a little bit. I don't know. I hope I did. Uh, but we had, a, we had a wonderful conversations. He was a wonderful guy. But the person who knew him way better than I did was Leah Friedman, his cousin. And so I'm inviting her to come up and talk a little bit about Stanley Babin. This light is pretty bright. Well, actually, um, I hadn't planned to talk that much about Stanley. A number of you knew him. I had planned to say something about Stanley as a scholar because um, Stanley falls into the category of piano, pianist, composer, quite an extraordinary ca category by itself, but pianist, composer, scholar, that's like pretty wild. Um, Stanley was born in what he called Tel Aviv Haktana. His family moved when he was a few months old because his mother didn't want to give birth in the middle of the desert uh, to, from Riga to Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv Haktana means the little Tel Aviv. This was, this was Tel Aviv between the two wars when a lot of the um, Jewish intellectuals across Europe were really fleeing to Tel Aviv. So Tel Aviv was the was kind of like a real, a real center. He studied piano with a guy named Franz Peleg, who became a cultural minister later on. So Stanley, at that moment in, in the history of Israel, um, was a very important moment intellectually in terms of the interest of scholars of, that, um, of the state that had not yet emerged in things like biblical history, and that was a, a a preoccupation of Stanley's lifelong biblical history and something called Northwest Semitic languages, um, and, in, and specifically, specifically the Book of Job. Stanley was um, was part of the Arthur Judson's um, a group of of uh, was represented by the Judson management and later on. Uh, what was his, the second management? Columbia, Columbia yes, the, later on, Columbia. Um, and then later on, he was with the Joffrey Ballet Company. And as he traveled the world with the, with the Joffrey, he haunted every bookstore, find, looking for books about Job. I'm talking about life long, a lifelong preoccupation. And at his death, when a specialist bookseller of Hebraica came to the house, um, I was there. And he said, I've never seen a collection about the book of Job. Now, Job we know as, um, well, I didn't know this. It is considered the most difficult of all of the Hebrew texts. And, um, and we know it as the book that probes the question of God's justice and the question of human suffering um, in its most profoundest sense. On the other hand, as a work made up of words, it is the most complicated and most difficult um, of all of the texts um, in the Hebrew canon. I'm just going to read a little something that I copied. The problems of Job, however, are not simply lexical, but also morphological and syntactic. The language is ostensibly Hebrew, but with so many peculiarities that some scholars have wondered whether it might not have been influenced by some other 
Semitic dialect. R. Gordis notes that in the book of Job, quote, the reader is confronted by a rich and often obscure vocabulary, a unique style, a complex structure, and profundity of thought, all of which make great demands, not only on the scholar's learning, but also on his insight. I felt that to understand Stanley's pianism and to listen, that, and to understand um, this piece, that it would be really helpful to understand how this piece emerged out of a very, very profound meditation on the book of Job on its, in its philosophical level but in, and in all of the complexities of the language and its history that was involved. So I just wanted to throw that in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we continue, I want to acknowledge a couple of other people in the audience that were close to Stan Lee and uh, who also have been working on the project of having his music published by Subito Press. Um, so first of all, I'd like to acknowledge David Hughes, who's been doing a lot, a lot of work on the, on the engraving, on the engraving of the scores. Uh, and has done an amazing job. Might have some gigs for you down the road. I wasn't surprised to you that there are complexities in the book of Job because this, is, this actually is a kind of a new musical syntax. I guess you call it Northwest. Uh, <laughs> it is phenomenally complicated. Um, and uh, it obviously uh, was the product of a lot of serious meditation. You've done a great job, you know that. And also, I cannot not and want to acknowledge Stanley's lovely daughter, Angela, who's sitting right here in the front row. A, a, a musician herself and a very interesting lady. Um, so what we'll hear when Sharon comes out again is we will hear Stanley Babin's Meditations on Job, and that'll be followed immediately by three Rachmaninoff preludes from his second opus of the preludes, opus 32, number five in G major, number six in F minor, and the final epic, number 13 in D flat major. Sharon Chang again.
Thank you for coming tonight. Um, the Sunday Evenings at Clavier House series is sponsored uh, as much as possible by Clavier House, but we have begun now in an effort to up the ante here, get a higher level of artists and keep this thing going to accept donations. So there is a sheet at the door as you exit that explains various ways to donate to Clavier House through me. So it's all my information for whatever you want. There's no obligation and we'll never charge for anybody to come here. But if you want to see this keep happening and you feel like throwing a buck or two towards us, it could help. Next week we have the fabulous pianist Lucille Chung, who uh, along with her husband, Lesio Bax, have a great piano duo. However, he's not available right now. So it's going to be Lucille playing by herself and she's a tiger of a pianist. That is next Sunday evening, uh, next Sunday evening rather, on Sunday evenings at Clever House. Have a good evening. Joe Patrick, he's a studio recorder, and I know he admires Stanley, and I think he'd be interested in recording Stanley. Anyway, that was the beginning of, of Joe's relationship, and Joe was free of charge. He was recording Stanley. I schlepped Stanley to 17 recording sessions. I was running out to buy the sandwiches so that they, you know, whatever. Chocolate, but I mean, don't forget the chocolate. yes, <laughs> and it was a great privilege to sit in the studio with that. Hamburg Steinway. Joe was behind the glass wall, but I was in the studio. And I just want to acknowledge Joe's um, commitment to, the, to art. It was, it was his commitment that, you know, he, you know, he recognized Stanley's pianism and he just went for it and there he was recording. And then he continued. We created this um, Babin Recording Historical Legacy Project, and, and he's just critical, and you see what he produced this evening, and so I want to acknowledge yeah. Joe for, for who he is. Listen, I know a good pianist when I see one, it's that simple. <laughs> Have a good night.